Thanks for joining me on my channel, Brutus on Baseball. In this video, I'm continuing my series about the biggest prospect busts from my collecting days. I started out in 1988, and now I've gone up through 1996. Today's video is going to be about 1997, 1998. Who were the big guys at that time that did not pan out? Now, to start off, if you were collecting in 1997, you know who the big name was on the block in that year. Seattle Mariners outfield prospect, Jose Cruz Jr. Now, Cruz Jr. was the son of Jose Cruz, a star outfielder for the Houston Astros in the 1970s and 1980s. And so needless to say, when his son came along, everybody expected him to be a huge baseball player as well. Cruz Jr. was a standout player at Rice University, and he was selected third overall in the 1995 draft by the Seattle Mariners. After just one year in the minor leagues, he was ranked as the number 12 prospect prior to the 1997 season and was called up to the big league squad for the Mariners early in 1997. Cruz Jr. was the hottest commodity in baseball card collecting that year, partly because of his prospect status, especially joining that Mariners club with Griffey and A-Rod, Randy Johnson and Edgar, but also because of the release of 1997 Bowman, which was a beautiful set with the black borders all the way around, making it hard to find in good condition, and also the inaugural release of 1997 Bowman Chrome. Another card set that has become a staple of the hobby and was just a magnificent card style in 1997. So the thought was among collectors that Cruz would be a staple in the Mariners lineup for years to come, sandwiched somewhere between A-Rod and Griffey. But Cruz's stay in Seattle wouldn't actually last very long as he was traded to the Toronto Blue Jays at the 1997 trade deadline to bolster up the bullpen for the Mariners who were trying to make a playoff run. The Mariners were criticized roundly for this trade, especially considering that Cruz Jr. was considered the hottest prospect in baseball that year. Slugging 26 home runs across the two teams, the Mariners and the Blue Jays, and placing second in the Rookie of the Year award voting that same season. But overall, success would elude Jose Cruz Jr. for the most part, as he bounced around nine different teams over 12 seasons, compiling a career OPS plus of 102, so just barely above average, and about 20 war, according to baseball reference. He did have some career highlights, including a 30-30 season for the Toronto Blue Jays in 2001 and winning a Gold Glove Award for the San Francisco Giants in 2003. But outside of those big feats, he didn't really accomplish a whole lot else. He retired after briefly playing for his father's team, the Houston Astros, in 2008, and he worked for ESPN as a baseball analyst after retiring from ball. In 2021, Jose Cruz Jr. returned to Rice University, where he was named the head baseball coach, a role that he still plays to this day. So if 1997 was the year for Jose Cruz to be a hot prospect in baseball, there was another guy whose rookie card was issued in 1997 Bowman and Bowman Chrome as well that came on strong just another year or two later. And that is Kerry Wood. Kerry Wood was selected by the Chicago Cubs just two spots before Jose Cruz Jr. in the 1995 draft going number four overall. Wood had very limited control early in his playing days, but the Cubs saw a prospect that could throw hard and potentially strike out a lot of people. He dominated in high single A in his first full season as a 19-year-old, going 10-2 with a 2.91 ERA. He was ranked as the number four prospect in all of baseball, one spot behind Cruz Jr., going into the 1997 season, and as the number three prospect in all of baseball prior to the 1998 season. Whereas Cruz made his debut in 97, Kerry Wood made his debut in 1998, when he was only 20 years old. And in his fifth Major League start, he threw one of the best games still to this day in the history of pitching in baseball. A complete game shutout of the Houston Astros, which was a monster of the team at the time, with Bagwell and Biggio among many others, allowing only one hit and striking out 20 batters tied for the major league record still to this day. He was named the 1998 Rookie of the Year after going 13-6 and six with a 3.4 ERA and a 129 ERA+. It's often thought that Wood was highly overworked early in his career, throwing way too many pitches in a lot of starts that didn't have a whole lot of meaning. In this rookie year, he didn't pitch in September of 1998 due to elbow soreness. And by spring training of 1999, he was finally diagnosed with a tear in his UCL, having to undergo Tommy John surgery and missing the entire 1999 season and the first half of the 2000 season. He did return to form in his first full season back in 2001, when he went 12-6 with a 3.36 ERA, 
And he had successful seasons in 2002 and 2003 as well, so he really looked like he was on the path back to stardom, including striking out a career-high 266 batters in 2003 and making his first All-Star team. He became the fastest pitcher in the history of baseball to reach 1,000 career strikeouts. But it all began to fall apart in 2004, as the injuries just kept piling up more and more. And he spent significant amounts of the next three seasons on the disabled list, with tricep, knee, and shoulder injuries, and eventually a torn rotator cuff, which caused him to miss pretty much all of the 2006 season as well. In response to all these injuries and his difficulty with staying on the mound, he transitioned from a starting pitcher to a relief pitcher, making his big league comeback from the rotator cuff surgery in August of 2007. The Cubs handled him very carefully, only pitching him in very limited roles and amounts, and he responded really well to the new role. He decided to return to the Cubs again for the 2008 season as a free agent, where he became the Cubs' closer and made his second All-Star appearance that same year as a relief pitcher. Although he had a fairly effective 2008 season, the Cubs decided not to sign him again after that season to a free agent contract, and he spent the next few seasons pitching really mediocre relief for the Indians and then the Yankees before returning to the Cubs one last time in 2011 and 2012 season. Kerry Wood was never able to regain all of the promise he had as a young prospect starting pitcher, nor was he able to avoid the injury bug for very long. He visited the disabled list 14 different times over 14 seasons and finished with a record of 86 and 75 with a 3.67 ERA, a 117 ERA plus, and about 28 war. Wood had made his home in the Chicago area and was hired on to be a special assistant to the Cubs for many years after retiring as a player. To this day, he and his wife also run the Wood Family Foundation, a charity helping low-income students to be able to succeed. Now, after Cruz Jr. and Wood in the 1997 Bowman series, we moved to 1998, and the first guy up in my mind was Ruben Mateo. Ruben Mateo was signed as a 16-year-old prospect out of the Dominican Republic, and he was seen as a can't-miss prospect. He was the top prospect in the Texas Rangers system for several years, including when he slashed 336, 385, 597 as a 21-year-old in AAA Oklahoma in 1999, which prompted a call-up to the Rangers big league squad halfway through that same season. He was ranked as the number nine prospect prior to the 99 season and the number six prospect in all of baseball prior to the 2000 season. He was a five-tool player, a speedy center fielder with a strong arm and swinging a big bat. He derived a lot of his prospect status from being able to play a premium position while also holding his own behind the plate and on the base path. In his first full season playing for the Rangers big league team, Mateo was performing well, hitting well over 300 midway through the season. But on June 2nd of 2000, Mateo would break the femur bone in his leg while trying to beat out a ground ball to first base. It was a really ugly injury, and one that I can still remember watching highlights of on SportsCenter. At the time, he was leading all rookies in batting average and was the most likely to win Rookie of the Year, but he missed the remainder of the season and then some because of the injury. When he finally got back to the field, Mateo just wasn't the same player. After breaking that major bone in his leg, he just wasn't as agile and speedy as he once was, which, like I said, is where he derived a lot of his prospect status from. And as a result, the Rangers moved him from center field to right field, where his range factor per nine innings dropped from 2.86 in center field in the year 2000 to 1.91 as a right fielder in 2001. So a pretty significant drop in how much range he could cover in the outfield. Mateo would be traded from the Rangers to the Reds midway through the 2001 season. According to Ruben Mateo himself, the biggest impact that he struggled with was the mental part of getting through that injury and making it back on the field to play at the major league level. And being traded during that recovery period, he said, made him lose confidence in his game and in himself. He played only sparingly in Cincinnati in 2002 and 2003, and then split time in 2004 between Pittsburgh and Kansas City, but he was never able to recapture that five-tool star player that everybody thought he was going to be. Over the next several years, he bounced around between South Korea to the Dominican Republic to Venezuela and even several teams in the minor leagues before he decided to retire in 2009. But eventually he made a comeback 
at the DH only role for a Mexican league team from 2012 to 2015, where he achieved an OPS hovering around 1,000 for three straight seasons, finally living up to his potential, at least on the hitting side of the ball. These days, he's settled down and lives in the Dominican Republic, where he owns a rental car agency. The last guy I'm going to cover in this video is also from the 1998 season. The Seattle Mariners thought they had the second coming of Randy Johnson when they drafted Ryan Anderson in the first round of the 1997 draft. Ryan Anderson was a hard-throwing, 6-foot, 10-inch tall, lefty flamethrower, just like his idol Randy Johnson. And because of that and being drafted by the Mariners, he quickly took on the moniker The Little Unit. He was ranked as the number seven, number nine, and number eight prospects in all of baseball between the 1999 and 2001 seasons, as he zoomed through the minor leagues, hitting AAA at the age of only 20 years old. He was seen by the Seattle organization, the fans, and even its own stars like King Fu Jr. and Alex Rodriguez as the next coming of Randy Johnson, at a time when the Mariners had traded away Randy Johnson and desperately needed another version of him, even a little unit version of him. But that all came to an end for Ryan Anderson in July of 2000, when he woke up the following morning after a dominant start, not able to move his throwing arm. Three shoulder surgeries and many years of rehab later, Ryan Anderson was released by the Mariners in 2005, never having appeared in a major league game. By his own admission, he said that everything came to him so easily when he was young that he had grown very lazy with his work ethic on the field and during his rehab stints which upon his own reflection made him feel it had limited his potential to return as a healthy Major League starter. After being released by the Mariners, the Milwaukee Brewers took a flyer on him and assigned him to the minor leagues. He enjoyed some pain-free stents in a couple starts, but inevitably before long the pain would return, and he finally decided to hang up his cleats once and for all after the 2005 season. Not long after that, he changed gears completely and decided to go back to culinary school, where he has enjoyed a second career as an executive chef ever since that time. So that is my walk through prospect bust history in today's video, looking back at 1997, Kerry Wood, Jose Cruz Jr., and 1998 with Ruben Mateo and Ryan Anderson. Join me next time for another video in this series where I pick up with the 1999 season and see where we go from there. In the meantime, be careful which prospects you invest in, keep talking baseball, and we'll see you around.